Last night game got a little chippy tonight, overtime in the championship game. I'm Mark Stern, president of Capital Hoops and the director of the Capital Hoops Summer League in DeMatha. The atmosphere of Summer League is fantastic. We get a great atmosphere. The fact that we have two games going on simultaneously on all weekdays means there's four teams playing at a time, 16 teams playing on a night. So you get a lot of fan bases, a lot of parents, a lot of just a lot of supporters who come in here on, on any given night. So the best players we've seen here at, at the DeMatha Summer League and now the Capital Hoops Summer League at DeMatha. I mean, I think Markel Fultz is probably the most notable guy. He had a couple, a couple of big summers here. I can remember some Pull big jumps that Fultz hard. had. Uh, Luca Garza had a, had a big summer here. Sadiq Bay, now the Pistons was another standout in Summer League. I think every year the most exciting thing about Summer League is seeing kind of new guys blossom and put their names on the map. I mean, I just, I mentioned earlier, some of the MVPs that we've had come through here, the Keno Lillies, the Ryan Archies. I mean, these were guys that 
a lot of people didn't know about. And they came in here and averaged 25, 27 a game. I can remember Keno Lilly scoring 40 in a game here. And when he left Summer League, I mean, he, he was a known commodity in the DMV. And every year there's guys who, I'm not going to say come out of the woodwork, but guys that just make this their proving ground and, and, and really show out of the Summer League. There are a couple of new teams in Summer League this year that I'm really excited to see. Uh, a couple of Virginia public schools. Hayfield is the defending Virginia 6A state champions. Uh, they, got, they got their first win on the, I think the first or second night of Summer League. And then Patriot, uh, they were undefeated in the regular season this year. I think they were 25, 26-0 and, and lost in the state semifinals. But they're brand new teams to Summer League. It's always good to bring good teams that other teams in the Summer League aren't familiar with at all. It's cool to get those teams involved because a lot of teams don't know really don't know what to expect when they when they enter the enter the fray here.
this and when I called the time out, I just told the guys just to relax, take a deep breath, and just play. You know what I mean? We we had we only had uh, four or five practices under our belt, so it was gonna, you know I knew it was gonna take the time for us to get the chili bugs. So, uh, but I'm proud of the guys that work really hard. You know they started to believe in themselves and get more confidence, and we started to pull away. So an interesting dynamic to summer league obviously is that there's a new coach in the building. Uh, this is the third coach they've had over the past three years. Mike Jones comes over from St. Stephen, St. Agnes. And one of the interesting aspects of that is that he led St. Stephen, St. Agnes to a lot of success in this summer league. They were the summer league champions. I believe it was two or three years ago they won the championship here. So he's been in this environment, in this building a lot for summer league over the past five plus years. So it's, it's, it's cool to see him as, you know, as the DeMatha head coach because he's been in this setting and had a tremendous amount of success. And now he gets to try that again with a new team, obviously the team that hosts the Summer League. So that's, it's just an interesting aspect and an interesting wrinkle to what we've got going on here. Man, it's late for us. Shade about to get a dub. Cool, this one in peace. Who's behind the scenes with Matt? You already know we gotta get this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Jones, um, current associate head coach at Virginia Tech, former uh, head basketball coach at DeMatha Catholic High School uh, from the years 2002 until 2021. A few years we decided to start a summer league here at DeMatha. Uh, we figured we were prominently located. Uh, we had the, the, the brand name that a lot of people would want to take part in it. And we started our league and it was very successful from day one till eventually all the teams that were in the other summer leagues basically wanted to be in the DeMatha Summer League. So DeMatha's Summer League has become the prominent place to be. Uh, a few years back, we brought Capital Hoops and Mark Stern on uh, to partner with us to run the Summer League because he's run so many great events. Uh, he is someone who shared our vision in terms of being able to help uh, high school student athletes get as much exposure as they possibly could, especially within the realm of summer basketball. Uh, so we partnered with Capital Hoops and then eventually basically just turned the Summer League over to Capital Hoops because Mark Stern did such a great job building the brand, building his brand, and building the Summer League. And now um, I do not know if there's a better Summer League anywhere in this country uh, with competition, with quality facilities, quality basketball, quality refereeing. Um, it's, it's just a, a, a great thing going on in the area and again, it, it, it supports the, the vision of helping student athletes get as much exposure as they possibly can. Uh, some of the best players to play in this league are playing currently in the NBA. Um, you know, Silwell Friends has put great teams in the summer league here, and Sadiq Bay and Josh Hart are both uh, very well known within the NBA right now. Uh, Paul the Six, uh, DeMatha, Gonzaga, you know, the Catholic schools. But I do believe the first summer league champion may have been uh, once Capital Hoops took it over. Uh, and started to partner with, partner with us uh, was North Point High School, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think they're one of the only public schools to ever win uh, the Summer League here. Um, I'm sure Mark can correct me if I'm wrong there, but um, we've had some great players, obviously all the great DeMatha players, Jeremy Grant, Markel Foltz, um, Nate Darling, you know, the guys that have gone on to play in the NBA, Cameron Taylor, James Robinson, those guys, but Chris Likes, 
did work here. You know, Stanley uh, Robinson, well, Stanford Robinson, excuse me, did work here. Um, you know, Melo Trimble did work here. Like a lot of guys that are well-known names in college and professional basketball did a great job of, uh, you know, kind of not getting their start here, but definitely putting their name on the map here. Student athletes in this area, and a lot of times the WCAC gets all of the attention. And our goal was to be able to give students beyond the WCAC uh, the ability to play in front of college coaches. And we, you know, to be able to come back here now as a college coach, I could not be more proud to see so many college coaches on the sideline. And then after the live events end, to see all the kids tweeting and talking about how many offers they got after performing at DMV Live. Last day of the regular season, McNamara's got to win this game to make the playoffs. 65 up, let's see what they got. Yo, y'all want to come watch? We're about to do it right now. We're here live at the math. Uh, the regular season just ended, and we're about to do some playoff seedings for uh, coin flips and, and whatnot. I'll break it down as we start. So there was two teams tied at 10 and 0. That was Tacoma Academy and Damatha. So we're gonna draw. We're gonna draw two names out of the hat right now. That's. Damatha and Tacoma, and that'll determine the one and two seeds. Seed in the playoffs belongs to Damatha. Damatha, number one seed. So that means the number two seed goes to Tacoma Academy. Both teams finish 10 and 0. All right, three seed, and that goes to St. Stephen, St. Agnes, who finished the year nine and one, and they were not tied with anybody. At four and five, Jackson Reed and Hayfield were tied at eight and two. That up. The number four seed goes to Tenley Tigers, number four seed, which means the five seed goes to the Hawks of Hayfield. All right, after that, we have a seven-way tie at seven and three for the number six through 12 seeds. Three, four, five, six, seven, so, the number six seed will be Landon, the number six seed. The number seven seed, Potomac School, number seven. The number eight seed, Fairfax, number eight. The number nine seed. 
Gonzaga, number nine. Number 10 seed. Georgetown Prep, number 10, Prep. Number 11 seed. Spalding, number 11. So that means the number 12 seed belongs to Bullis. Number 12 seed is seven and three. 13 seed. The only team to finish six and four was Good Counsel. They're the number 13. Big play head to head. So Patriot is the number 14 seed and Gaithersburg is the number 15 seed. And now the, the real drama of the night. There's seven teams that finished four and six and one of them will get the number 16 seed in the playoffs. So they are, we'll go through them real quick. The Bulldogs of Churchill. McNamara. The Rockets of RM. Greenbelt of Eleanor Roosevelt. Flint Hill. The Vikes of Whitman. And Sandy Spring. So I'm not a math major, but I'm guessing there's like a 13, 14% chance that one of these teams will get in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we're gonna give a good shake to this one. All right, the number 16 seed goes to Greenbelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, the number 16 seed. The defending 4A state champions. We'll see y'all at the playoffs next Monday. The bracket will be out tomorrow. Appreciate it. Summer League 22 regular season is a wrap. Just finished up tonight. We got 160 games in the bag so far. Playoffs start next week. Got a little DMV Live break this weekend uh, as the Summer League regular season ends and the playoffs start. But it was a, a great regular season, man. DeMatha got the number one seed in a coin flip with Tacoma Academy. But DeMatha might have gotten the most difficult playoff draw of all, playing Eleanor Roosevelt, Greenbelt, the defending Maryland 4A state champions. There's a little rivalry in itself between those two teams. They play during the regular season every year. So, you know, claiming that number one spot is always good, but getting a draw like that, pro probably not fun. Summer League was fantastic. Had a lot of support out here, a lot of different media outlets, obviously parents and friends of the programs and, you know, a, a lot of buzz through here. So that, that was fantastic. I'm sure the playoffs won't disappoint. Always a lot, a lot higher energy when the when the playoffs come around, and uh, you know we'll be we'll be giving out the MVP award, giving out some other some other awards here in the next in the next week, and then uh, next Saturday, July second, a, a champion will be crowned.
Leading this one 24 to 20 over Georgetown Prep, Noah Schubert, Stephen Harris, joined by Mark Stern, the director of the Capitol Hoop Summer League. And Steve, to start off, we got a close one right here, don't we? Yeah, we really do. Led by Isaiah Arnold, who has you know, 12 points here in this first half. He's played 15 minutes of 16 and five of nine from the field. He's played you know, a tremendous first half here tonight. And last time that Georgetown Prep faced off against the Mathlet, the Mathlet did come out victorious, but Mark, only a two-point game, and this one close as well. Overtime game, the Matha wins back-to-back -back chips. The last couple days were, were crazy here. Obviously, last night game got a little chippy tonight. Overtime in the championship game. Um, incredible way to go out. The Matha really showed up at the end, and uh, they're holding that trophy for the second year in a row. Got to thank everybody who came out here. All the staff we have, 32 teams, probably 100 different referees who have come through. Tons of media outlets. It's been uh, it's been a blessing having all the support that we've had. Can't wait for next year.